You have some narrative in your mind that is so negative that when you look in the mirror, you see somebody worth trashing. You see what's wrong. You pick apart your appearance. And I want to reverse that because here's the deal about self-confidence. Self-confidence begins with you. You realize the word self is in there, right? I can't give you confidence. I can give you a little boost. I can give you tools. I can encourage you. But confidence is forged in fire. It's something that's within you. And here's the thing I want you to realize about confidence. You are a confident person. That's why you miss feeling that way. You can only miss what you know. You've just been blocked from the feeling of it. And wherever you are right now in your life, I'm telling you, confidence is in there. You just got to figure out how to tap into it. If you're holding on to something that does not serve you, you are making a terrible error. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. You may blame other people or other things. You may blame the situation. Uh-uh. It's you are the cause of the problem. The man that told me to pick up this book and read it, Ray Stanford, he had a saying. He used to say to me, Bob, you're the only problem you'll ever have, and you're the only solution. I think it might have taken me five years to understand it. But I do understand it. And you know something? I am the only problem I'll ever have, and I am the only solution. Don't hold on to anything that is not serving you. Reject it. You know the beautiful part about having an inductive reasoning factor? That's the part that chooses thoughts. You can accept or reject. The beautiful part of your mind, you can accept or reject anything that comes into your world. Accept or reject it. It's a choice. Don't hold on to anything that is not serving you. If we play the victim role, then we are using our personal power to be helpless. If we decide to accept responsibility, then we don't waste time blaming somebody or something out there. Some people feel guilty for creating illness or poverty or problems. They choose to interpret responsibility as guilt. And some members of the media like to refer to it as new age guilt. These people often feel guilty because they believe that they have failed in some way. However, they usually accept everything as a guilt trip in one way or another because it's another way to make themselves wrong. And that is not what I'm talking about. If we can use our problems and illnesses as opportunities to think about how we can change our lives, we have power. Here's something I want you to keep in mind. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. In the past, if you look at it, people have perceived themselves as victims of everything around them, victims of circumstances. And then we go, oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, life did not give me those wonderful things that other people have. And, and the simple reality is, no, no, if you have an issue, it's not the outside. This is what we've always, oh, universe, give me something. We now know that our issues are internal. It's our own subconscious beliefs that we've been programmed with of disempowerment like when a child is growing up and getting its programs so think of what things parents say oh you don't deserve this who do you think you are i mean the parents didn't mean that for your whole life they just they were trying to you know goad you you know needle you to make a change so they would say these things 95 percent of our life comes from those programs so if you have disempowering beliefs about who you think you are because you got them from other people that's how you know who you are these disempowering beliefs play 95% of the day in an average person's life. So I say, yeah, well, my wishes and desires, oh, I want success, I want great relationships, I want all these wonderful things, I want health. I go, well, that's conscious mind, because conscious mind's creative. But uh, as science reveals, only 5% of the day are we operating from our own personal wishes and desires. 95% of the day we operate from the programs that we got in the first seven years. And if those programs, which psychologists have told us 70% are negative and disempowering and self-sabotaging, I say, good, apply these 95% of the day in your life. And you realize why your life is a struggle. It's not a struggle because the universe is not providing. It's a struggle because your own consciousness is not accepting. 
And this is where we have to change. And so getting control of your mind, taking charge of your consciousness, is a way of overcoming those limitations. There are many different ways to, to take this control back in, in your life. Uh, and one of them is the, the ability to, uh, like in yoga, for example, to be the master of your mind and not let it run the monkey mind. Let it run. No, I want this. I don't, don't let this other one go. And so overcoming the old self allows us to become somebody else. And there is that period of transition. Yeah. I call it the void where there's just not a lot happening. And you just got to be able yeah. to keep going and continuously get to the end of your belief where most people stop. I just had a fabulous conversation with someone uh, this weekend. Broke through to the other side. And now there's so much magic happening around this person. But she's worthy now to receive it and that's that that is the key because the universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving so we got to come initiated into this and understand it thousands of years of programming that says that we have to change things uh, matter to matter you know in three-dimensional reality and it will take time but to begin to connect to that resource called the quantum field and create from the field instead of from matter there's a lot of unlearning that has to go on. You have to really begin to mentally rehearse. Like, so you ask yourself at the end of your day, I do this every day, how'd I do? How'd I do today, bro? How'd you do? Did you do good? Where'd you fall from grace? What, what, what was it that caused you to go unconscious for the rest of the day? Like, what was that moment? Now, if you're a student of life, you'll begin to contemplate, well, it was that person that said that thing, then I reacted, or this, I got this email, or things didn't go my way, and I started feeling angry or frustrated or fearful. The next time that happens, how could I involve my experience? Now, you may have to search for some answers of the best model to build, or you may actually have a long contemplation and start to go, the next time that happens, I think I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that or I'm going to plan my behaviors. And the act of closing your eyes and rehearsing what you're going to do begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. Now the brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep installing that hardware,